This is an SKN Newsline feature presentation. This is St. Kitts Nevis Votes 2020. I'm Andre Huey, your host. Thank you for joining us. This week, or today rather, on St. Kitts Nevis Votes 2020, we'll be profiling constituency number four, looking at Lindsey Grant and Steve Rensford. Now, this is a constituency that has three candidates. We're looking only at the two major ones for this program today. We'll have a subsequent interview with the independent candidate, Jason Thomas. Let's first, before we get into all of that, though, let's first get into election news. Team Unity launched their manifesto on Monday night in their virtual meeting at the St. Kitts Marriott Ballroom. The manifesto looked back at the gains of the Team Unity government over the past five years and promised improvements in the economy by building out a diversified and resilient economy, providing opportunities of improvement of quality of life, improvements in national security, enhancing public infrastructure and commitment to the good governance agenda, among other things. Indeed, a comprehensive blueprint for the continuing development of St. Kitts and Nevis. And it builds upon the framework, the groundwork that we have laid over the last five years. Yes, we know that these are uncertain times. The whole world is recovering from COVID-19. And here in St. Kitts and Nevis, we have been working to rebuild St. Kitts and Nevis stronger than ever before. Our stimulus package is the largest and the best in the region. It sets the platform for stabilizing the economy and it begins to put in place the building block for a dynamic economy post-COVID-19. The manifesto is available digitally at www.tumanifesto2020.com. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Following the statement issued by the Coalition of NGOs regarding the absence of regional and international observers in the upcoming St. Kitts and Nevis general elections, an article purporting to be written by the Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws and JNF Chief of Staff Dr. Cameron Wilkinson began circulating on social media. The article in question, dated 31st May, made several recommendations by which the government could accommodate regional and international observers for the 2020 general elections just days away on 5th June. SKN Newsline attempted to contact both medical doctors to substantiate the authenticity of the information. On contacting Dr. Wilkinson, he immediately confirmed that he had seen the circulating information but had nothing to do with the article. He said he would make no further comment on the matter. Meanwhile, several hours after writing to the chief medical officer and attempting to contact her by phone, the CMO remained unresponsive. The Team Unity government has been criticized for refusing to allow international observers to monitor the elections, even within the context of the COVID-19 related state of emergency. The coalition of NGOs wrote to the government indicating their organization's inability to perform the proper role and function of a general election observer. Glenbart, SKN Newsline. June 5th is election day in St. Kitts and Nevis. SKN Newsline is your source for all things elections. Starting Monday, May 25th, SKN Newsline presents St. Kitts and Nevis Votes 2020, a program providing updates, features, profiles, and analysis on candidates, constituencies, and issues as the country headed to the polls. Weekdays at 12 noon live on sknnewsline.com and the SKN Newsline Facebook page. St. Kitts and Nevis Votes 2020 on SKN Newsline, your source for election news and analysis. 
these stressful times, you need relief, a way to release your stress and care for your health. You need Serenity. Yes, Serenity Mobile Spa, where we come to your home and offer the very best in massage and spa treatment. Your health is our priority as we practice the highest hygiene procedures before, during, and after your treatment. Choose from massages to meet your physical needs, scrubs, facials, waxing, and much more. We also provide our customers a complimentary serving of refreshing local coconut water with each massage. During these restricted times, we urge our customers to stay healthy. We will come to you. Call us at 7620157 or 7608899. Find us on Facebook, Serenity Mobile Spa Sinkage. Or email us at Serenity Mobile Spa 869 at gmail.com. Serenity Mobile Spa. Looking for a clean haircut to make you look your best? Then, then come, come to Creative, Creative Barber Salon, Salon on Church, Church Street, Street Bastier. Bastier. At Creative Barber Salon, you can choose from a wide variety of services straight haircut, cut and shave, square and shave, children haircut, ladies cut, square, and much more. Customer, Customer service, service guaranteed. guaranteed. Opening hours Monday to Thursday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Friday to Saturday, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Call 765-0460. Visit Creative Barber Salon today on Church Street, Bastier. Specializing in, in, in all, all styles, styles of, of haircuts. haircuts. Get the finest in Pandora jewelry at Noble Jewelers. For Zante. Like our Facebook page and get special offers. Noble Jewelers, your Pandora store for Zante. Welcome back to Sin Kids News Votes 2020. As I promised you, we have the constituency profiles, the candidate profiles. We'll start with Lindsey Grant, the incumbent, the People's Action Movement. If there is any candidate in these elections that has proven his resilience, it's Lindsey Grant of the People's Action Movement. After several failed attempts to be elected in constituency number four as leader of the party, Grant finally got elected in 2015 over Glenn Phillip of the Sin Kitts and Nevis Labour Party. Politics was something that interests him at a young age. At the age of 10, I remember handing out flyers in a general election, can't remember which one it was, um, for the People's Action Movement, of course, because my grandmother then was a staunch supporter of the People's Action Movement. In fact, I think she had nominated Dr. William Herbert when he ran then in that constituency. So we are steeped in the politics in terms of um, family. We weren't really traditionally out front, but we were supportive. I think I've been the only person within the family who have been out front in the politics. Grant's first term as MP has had some successes. Excuse me, a program that I'm now running. And I run a breakfast program for students in my constituency. I began really, and it was not my brainchild, let me say that. It was the brainchild of some individual who came to me and gave me the idea and said, look, this is what is happening in the school. Um, young people are coming to, to school and not having eaten breakfast and you should start something. And I thought about it and say, excellent idea. And so I started a program out of my house. Uh, my wife and I would get up um, five o'clock in the morning and we would prepare breakfast for 25 students of the Tyrell Williams Primary School. 25 and we did it two days a week I think it was Monday and Wednesday and then two days we became three days and then became five days but not without challenges a legal matter involving his law firm Grant and Powell has been used by his opponents against him prompting calls for his resignation some even refer to the infamous Marriott video from the 2010 elections where he was secretly filmed speaking to who he thought was an investor in a bid to secure a campaign fund Unity helping to win that constituency. Um, uh, the fact that union people were looking for, you know, it was a new dispensation, a new way, and so on. He, got uh, he has done some good work. 
Uh, but you, I don't know if you're aware if you were here during the marriott affair that and now he has another issue that has you know that is that 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 spells danger in my view you, you can't come from the marriott affair to this affair and go unscathed you 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 that's a little bit of a but not everyone thinks this will affect grant's chances of re-election and you know my view is that i don't really know it's going to have a huge significant a hugely significant impact one way or the other i mean look let, let, we have those who's flying left right and center in this election campaign um there are matters against denzel douglas as well which are being being discussed and bandied about on political platforms um when i did my polling uh around the time that that issue was right uh it didn't really get the impression that people were particularly concerned one way or the other. And Grant himself does not take it for granted he will be automatically re-elected. He's up against two candidates in number four, independent candidate Jason Thomas and the Labour Party's Steve Rensford. I never underestimate my opponent. I do all the work that is necessary to succeed and to win. And I tell my team every day, the job is not done until the job is done. We have not won until the last vote is counted in the box. That is how I operate. I take nothing for granted. I have two opponents instead of one, and I'm not taking them for granted either. Um, and what I would say to you is that I'm confident, very confident, not overly confident, that I will succeed come June the 5th, 2020. That profile on Lindsey Grant of the People's Action Movement. Now we join Steve Rensford of the St. Kitts Davis Labour Party. Steve Rensford is not your usual rambunctious political candidate. Quiet and reserved, Rensford comes with a wealth of experience and knowledge in community service. Appointed ambassador under the Labour Party administration in 2010, Bransford dedicated his life to service. We'll know that you are an uh, ambassador, I believe. Please explain to the people why we refer to you as His Excellency. Well, um, in 2010, I think, the government um, appointed me as ambassador to um, Trinidad and Tobago and the Bolivarian Republic of um, Venezuela. He displayed political ambitions early on. See, from ever since I was a young person, mm -hmm. I have been in leadership position. I have been leadership position in my um, village, um, in my constituency. I, I have been president of Young Labour um, around 1980. Wow. I have been um, chairman of the, the branch around 1980. Mm -hmm. I've been um, organizing cultural events in my constituency since 1980 and so on. But some thought he would have entered the political ring in number four much earlier. I thought that, uh, you know, uh, at this time, he, he left, they left it a little bit late. But he's an able guy. And I believe if Labour wins the election and Steve is the thing, you're going to see that constituency. That's going to be a constituency that, 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 that will be the envy of the rest of the country. Steve has good plans. He's a good community man. MI Festival, the Football League, the, wherever, Steve has organized it already. Really able, really capable, but like I say, he's getting on in age and not as physically robust and so as, as some of the younger candidates. And like I say, I believe, le, Steve was supposed to run a lot of times. Or, or when, when, when Herbert in 1995, Steve was, you know, the personal thing. And then later on, when, when Goose, uh, Philip in, in, in 2000 and four, I think, uh, 2010, Steve again lost the opportunity there. And I think I, 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 I was of the view that, that he was then past it, but I don't know, for some reason he came Rensford back. believes he has the ideas that will transform the lives of the people in his constituency. Yes. Some people, when they, when they hear the programs and they hear the, um, the excitement of mm -hmm. getting our constituency to move, to be developed, and the young people to be um, involved and the focus is on the youth and the youth in the area. Mm -hmm. People become excited. Mm -hmm. They become encouraging. Mm -hmm. And so we have even the campaign has now a youth arm which goes around campaigning, separate and apart from myself. Wow.
understand this. But what does stand for? We are sinkers and nevis waste disposals. Oh, so it's all just rent the big bin for when people clean in the yard and construction project and so? Yes, we do that. Okay, so what about septic tank and grease trap cleanings? Yes, yes we, we do, do that. that. Them portable toilet rental? Yes, we do that. So what about if I want to rent a sexy bar home trailer for like VIP events or my outdoors wedding? Yes, we do that. Residential garbage pickup? Yes, we do that. Okay, okay, okay. So if my office have a bunch of documents we need shredded? Yes, we do that. Boy, I talking to you and you know. But when you answer me, I hear in like 10 people. That's just the strength of our team working for you. Watch now. Call us at 662-3329 and we'll come and do that for you. Like us on Facebook. Welcome back to Simkis Leaders Votes 2020. I'm Andre Huey. Well, as promised, we'll have our constituency analysis. And for constituency number four, and to do that, we join political analyst and pollster Peter Wickham. Uh, um, an interesting seat again. Number four is a seat which Lindsey Grant struggled to gain that seat on on several occasions. Um, many times he came close and he lost. Um, he formally led the People's Action Movement, so he is a politician of some um, history. And I would say he's a politician that's been around for some time, but he has struggled to hold that seat before. He won it in the last election very narrowly. Um, he had a 51% level of support, which basically means that a 1% swing in the other direction will take him out. Uh, the distance in terms of votes is 36. Uh, it's not a whole lot of votes in terms of the difference. And then looking at the, uh, the level of, of increase in total registrations, uh, it was only about 20%. So one could argue that even though there was an overseas voting component in that constituency, it was perhaps not as high as it was, let's say, in number three. So um, the overseas vote will probably not help Lindsey Grant, or the absence of the overseas vote will not help Lindsey Grant, as well his senatorial uh, colleague in, in the constituency next door. Um, so he, he basically has to look to, to stave off a uh, swing against Team Unity. If there is the slightest thing against Team Unity, he is one of the first people that will begin to feel it uh, and he will be looking. Steve Rensford is in perhaps uh, a weaker position because he is a first timer. Um, Lindsey Grant would have um, been holding the constituency before. So as a non-incumbent and as somebody who is relatively green in the same way that we were saying, uh, we were saying that of uh, Powell earlier, that could be very well a factor as we as we look at coming in, but the the idea of or the likelihood of changing in terms of um, Grant, uh, I would say that that seat is also a marginal one, and that seat is one that we're looking at to see whether there is a swing against Team Unity, and if so, he would definitely be impacted because holding fifty one percent of the popular vote isn't doesn't, doesn't make it a safe seat. And that will do it for this edition of Sinkis News Votes 2020. I'm Andre Huey. Thank you for watching. As we can continue to count down the days leading to the June 5th elections this coming Friday. You stay tuned to SK and Newsline for all source, for all information as it relates to Saint Kiss, the St. Kitts Nevis elections. You have yourself a pleasant day and we'll be back tomorrow for another edition of the program.